my first uh culture shock i would say is not seeing tall buildings and a lot of land and a lot of sky i'm like hmm ye to nahi bataya tha movies mein ya <laughs> uh, everyone who's joined us happy sunday i am priya from it's okay r and we are back with another episode of how i am building this where we cover the journeys of various south asian entrepreneurs from different backgrounds <laughs> If you are new today, it's okay. R is a content platform for South Asian immigrants, and we aim to educate, entertain, and empower them. Today we have Anjali with us. Anjali, from a Desi girl in the U.S. to the Immigrant Academy, you are the founder of Immigrant Academy. How does it feel? How are you? All sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we recently went through this change, and we're just. figuring a lot of things out but overall amazing <clears throat> feels amazing yeah and if you have not and if you don't know about anjali i don't know how that's possible i feel like anyone who is on a, a dependent visa knows about anjali and your platform but uh, anjali is the founder of the immigrant academy uh, it's a community based mentoring uh, program to make sure um, that you're able to restart your career all of our followers we get questions on a daily basis about is it possible the way we feel is just not good when you're especially doing your first job search but anjali is the example of the person who started her own thing she is on a mission to make sure that she's helping every other person on a dependent visa and she's doing it with a full time job right anjali I oh am. my god <laughs> talk to us tell us about your background your journey and how you started the immigrant academy sure uh, a big hello to everyone who's just joined um uh i've shared this multiple times but i'm going to tell you in very brief like how the last few years looked like um so i grew up in mumbai first quarter of my life uh come from a middle class family have all my family back there all my friends um and i never ever intended to leave mumbai so that's the kind of girl i was um met this wonderful guy and decided on a whim chalo i'll move to us with you um packed my bags you know had farewell parties and in my head i just thought you know it's an english speaking country i exactly. it'll be fine you know yeah um and so i didn't do much research i didn't look up on social media i didn't try to read any depressing blogs i was like i'm just go going to go with a positive attitude um i land here so i go from uh bombay to tampa bay which is a a a, a really nice city in florida and uh I I want to speak on behalf of a lot of other people who come from the east to the west that our idea of America is New York City. Yep. Right? So if we don't see New York City or LA in anywhere any other city in the states we're like where are we and why are we here? What are we doing here? So my first uh culture shock I would say is not seeing tall buildings and a lot of land and a lot of sky. I'm like hmm ye to nahi bataya tha movies mein um so my initial like struggle which which may not happen to a lot of people is adjusting from a big city life to a smaller city life um getting used to the fact that people are not in a go 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 mode and they're taking their own time and doing things their own way uh so it took me more than a year to one accept to embrace this change and really you know uh join how how others were doing things um i think the first biggest challenge which i'm sure everyone relates to is um not having that 9 to 5 job to go to and have that identity that paycheck that feeling of independence um and i'm and i'm sharing all this in a very like you know in a, in a nutshell because i'm sure that emotion is much bigger than what you know any one of us can explain um when i was going through that it took me close to 8 months to land my first entry level job in marketing at a startup and i was the 11th employee and i drove for an hour every day to get that uh 
and very very basic salary like i think i spent more money on gas than i even got paid uh-huh. but i had a job i had a job and uh, i was very excited but it also like um it opened doors for me to meet with other people who were going through that same struggle and they told me oh you landed a job in 8 months hum to 2 saal se try kar rahe hain uh hamara to abhi tak ead nahi laga and i was uh, like yeah but even when you get a ead or even when you finish your masters don't expect a job is waiting for you you still have to work for it and uh, that made me realize okay i was not the only person who's going through this there are thousands of people who are going through this and it kept me like awake it kept me thinking like why is there not a system or process or people out there ready to tell us hey this is how you do things or don't make these mistakes or you know you must do this and i felt like this biggest gap which was here for immigrants and i wanted to solve it so oh, that is that is amazing i felt like hearing your story i went down our journey when my husband was going through something very similar and that made us start it's okay ar and i think for everyone who's here anjali came on an h4 visa and she it, it the pains are very similar it's very okay to feel like not uh fulfilled because as south asians we kind of um associate our identity with the job that we are doing and when you come here and it takes you so hard to get your first job it's just not a good feeling so i know anjali like the your mission is beautiful it's uh, it's community based like tell us a little bit about ready set ready set roll i know that's that's the program and what is it i i don't think a lot of people fully fully know so would love for you to share that Sure thing happy to happy to tell you more about it uh, but just a small correction in terms of my visa i did not come on h4 sure. i came here on a different visa and i had to get through a work permit by green card but ah. even even though that process was super lengthy it made no different absolutely no difference to my job applications ah. so even when people tell that if you're a citizen or your green card holder or an l1 l2 visa you have more chances of you know or you're you're a better candidate at the job market absolutely absolutely not I, no i did not get a single call back uh, even though i said i don't need sponsorship so uh, this is something i wanted to put out there that don't believe that your visa type or your you know uh, something like that is the barrier to your job if you know it's it's just the system is a little crooked you know there no. is a big hole in the system thank you so, for calling uh, calling that out because the job search process in india is very different from the job search process in the us here you have yeah. to really market yourself or articulate all of the things and in india like your work kind of speaks for yourself so it's mm-hmm. just a whole different way to approach the system so again anyone who's on an h4 visa who's listening and feeling my visa status is the reason that i'm not getting a job here is anjali that's not the reason everyone who is going to come here is going to take a while to land their first job uh, with that anjali tell us about your program and ready set ready set roll yeah so ready set roll is a 6 week mentoring program where we make uh, skilled immigrants ready for their first job and we do this by bringing in industry experts who are here to mentor you on different stages of that job search journey so for example you are waiting for your work permit or you received your work permit and now all of a sudden you're like oh my god i didn't do anything for the last 2 years and suddenly i have to figure out you know how do i craft my resume what do i do with my linkedin i don't even have a profile or you know i am applying for like hundreds of jobs i'm not getting one single reply i don't understand when what when you say go and network or go get a referral so we tackle or tell you how to do all of the above in a very systematic manner and we take you step by step from you know pre job search until you know what do you do after you accept your offer and how to succeed your first 90 days at a new company uh-huh. so that is the kind of hand holding we do during this program and uh, this was our third cohort uh, we started mm-hmm. last year this is our third cohort 
um and we would be having another uh, cohort soon sometime in summer but uh, the most beautiful part about this cohort is when the women sign up they have no idea what's going to happen in class but the community uh, or you know that group um, mentorship aspect here is what makes them feel that hey i am not alone in this journey there are several other immigrants like me with a career gap with babies with you know uh, 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 questions about what to do with my career and we are all going to figure it out together and our mentors are here to support you through this journey and uh, every time i've seen that there is this one person one mentee who secured the job before the program ends and i have not shared this yet but uh, we just ended our program and we already have a person with a job offer in hand who just accepted and also started their new job so that is the reason why we do this like for that feeling we live for that feeling that happiness no that that is like that is an amazing amazing feeling and everyone who's new again like we collaborated with anjali on a blog which is about five steps to restart your career as an immigrant we will link that and then definitely go check out her program because i know of late we've been getting a lot of messages in terms of uh, where do i get started i'm still looking it's been 6 months this is the perfect opportunity for you to go check out her program and see if that's the right fit for you uh, but I really I remember you messaging um us when you had watched like the final episode of independent our web, web series which was about job search where uh, Arsha kind of goes through her entire journey and you were like wait I relate to this so much um so tell us a little bit about like your experience watching that and uh, the emotions you felt when you saw that episode because it's very dear to us it was everything um we were going through at that point and it was just not very easy yeah like the last episode is what like really like had that final chord that struck to me because i literally felt it was me who was speaking and all of this has already happened to me or in my life and the last part where she says that this is what i'm going to do i am going to help fellow job seekers or new immigrants to you know find their new career i'm going to tell them how to do this because i've been through this entire journey and i don't want to keep that secret with me i want to tell everyone how to do it the right way which will not only save you time but also money and effort because every month that you're sitting at home without a paycheck you are losing that paycheck so why not you know pay that amount as a fees get mentored and immediately start working like it's a no brainer when you are getting that kind of professional service now it it was a non existent thing until now okay it was a thing that people wouldn't even think about oh aisa bhi help mil sakta hai it was Correct. it was not a thing and now when it is make use of this opportunity you know if if you're planning to pursue masters when you already have a masters think about it is it your degree that's stopping you or is it you know the yes. lack of knowledge or information on how to crack the job market that's stopping you yeah no you make such an important point because um, just we are not used to i would say as a culture getting mentored or having a coach and i think this concept is very foreign for everyone to invest in yourself to like move ahead in your journey so again for everyone who wants to like just understand whether this is a right fit also let's chat because to anjali's point sometimes you just don't have enough information to get started versus feeling like are usko job mila tha because they got a masters i may be masters kar leti hu and then you will realize you're still stuck in that loop and job fir bhi dhoondna you still have to go network on linkedin you still have to build that resume all of that has to happen it's not like back home in india where on campus someone is going to come and be like this is a placement process and you get hired like it's just different you guys so like if you have been thinking about whether this is the right fit for me is it for me at least check it out be open to that idea and it might not be the best fit for everyone but at least give it a shot so no thank you for sharing that uh, anjali was there a time you, from a desi go ahead sorry got to interject for one second here um uh, for asians 
i don't think the concept of having a guru or you know getting that extra coaching is new because we have you know gone to school we have bachelors some of them have <clears throat> double masters and phd's and for every time i want you to think about it you had a teacher you had a professor you had a class of other students with you and that is what actually helped you you know gain that milestone that degree that result right but once we adult and we are in this stage where we are told to go figure it out why should you not have a coach a mentor or a guru at this stage in your life right who is stopping you no one right no one it's absolutely your choice to go for it and the ones who do it see the results in it right so yes the concept is alien of getting a coach or a mentor in your adult life when you are supposed yeah. to figure it all out no you that's true because every mentor and coach has been built into our education system like if you have taken a tuition that's how it works so that has become like ingrained in your education system so that's when you don't really think that the coach or mentor helped me or uh, like i had a guru who helped me move like to your point when you adult that's when you are like well i had all of the information and resource already i should not be putting more so no that's a very interesting way to think about it when you were saying i was like wait it was all built in that's why no one questioned and now you have to invest in it so you're like well i don't think i should be doing that so here are you um and anjali i know that you went from a desi girl in the us to um the immigrant academy were there times in your entire journey where you felt like ah uh, this is like too difficult it's too ch- ta- challenging and i just want to give up or like i know for a lot of entrepreneurs that never happens but curious you, anything that you can share there um so i want to share like the first piece before i even uh, started with desi girl in us like that first big challenge for me was how do i do this i knew i wanted to do this i wanted to um help you know immigrant job seekers land a job but how do i do it so not many of you know not many of us know this but for one whole year i would speak to one immigrant a day and provide free career advice and mentoring like that one year was a, a space for me to see the intensity of the problem and how much or like how many barriers are present right now you know to cross it uh the biggest challenge for me when i started the seagull in us um was how do i raise awareness of these problems that exist when i'm speaking to a community who is not ready to one accept the problem and to seek professional help for this problem so this was the biggest mountain i had to climb and uh, don't get fooled by the social media i had to spend several hours over the last 2 years only to build this awareness to build this community and to you know get people to come and tell me Yes Anjali I am facing this you know I am facing communication struggles I am not landing a job my uh, family is not supportive of my decision or I have a career like earlier nobody would admit it no one has a place to go and tell that yes I am going through this and now there is uh, but this was the biggest challenge for me uh, because it was a brand new initiative unheard of and here i am trying to tell people it is possible right it is yeah. possible to do this just give it a try give this a shot and you got to believe in yourself if you are making this decision to invest in yourself you are going to see results but the awareness part was my biggest biggest challenge, challenge i would say that okay that thank you for um sharing that what what's next for you anjali or what's next for the immigrant academy how are you thinking about it at the long term uh our long term vision has actually become big so our mission is to uh, or our vision is to build the go to learning and mentoring platform for skilled immigrants to achieve that american dream and that could be anything it could be a job buying a house mm-hmm. buying a car opening a bank account uh you know having your first kid go to school here it could be anything your american dream could look like anything and we want to be you know that community that platform who 
empowers you or supports you to achieve that milestone um our and this big vision requires funds and human resources and that is where all the struggle begins because uh we're still slowly transitioning from this um mission to become you know from a one woman show we want to you want we want to put this out for the entire community and we want to request our entire community to you know uh do that word of mouth refer us uh send in mentors writers whoever you can because we really need that support at this moment if we want to meet our mission of um helping 10000 immigrants we need thousands of mentors to join us and uh that is that is what is next for us and uh that's why we are here to do this so oh, that's beautiful because you're kind of covering all of the aspects of the american dream and how do you get there so that's uh more power to you and best of luck uh with your uh mission um and i know that you've been like building this community and you've been like supporting so many other businesses as well tell us a couple of south asian businesses that you personally love and what you love about them um so i'm going to start with my uh, most recent find which is desification it's um and i'm sure I, i think you guys know them too because they they found me because of you yes uh, so there there are a couple, uh, couple entrepreneurs who are are uh, trying to create games board games for us desis so yeah. i really liked their concept so that is one the second is definitely it's okay r i don't oh, think uh without your uh content um uh, it wouldn't have been possible to you know uh, further raise the awareness of all the immigrant problems that were you know were we as a community go through so hats off to you guys yes. and i absolutely love and share your content um and the third one is i won't say it's a small business because it's blown up it's live tinted uh, oh, yeah. uh, a beauty and skin care brand by deepika and i absolutely adore her she's one of my role models there uh and it is south asian owned beauty brand it was i think that was one of the first south asian big brands that i got to know and i was like wow It's yeah possible. that she it's she is impressive she is yeah. impressive yeah <laughs> no the, i think someone else also mentioned lived lived in ted and i think as um people who are in this space uh she's definitely an inspiration to so many but thank you for acknowledging us that's our idea i feel like everyone who moves here or is looking to move here thinks it's all going to be rosy once you are here and all of the dollars are going to keep coming and it's going to be easy so our idea is to make sure that we balance out the good and the bad and make sure that you have all of the information uh before you make that decision so appreciate you mentioning us um our next segment is my favorite segment chai or coffee with priya i think i already know the answer i follow you enough to know the answer to the first one but it's like a this and that the first one is chai or coffee so it's coffee every morning chai every sham so <laughs> amazing Okay, awesome. Um the second one is dhania or no dhania? Dhania. Okay. Yes, pineapple on pizza yay or nay? Nay, but unfortunately my husband likes it so I conveniently take the pineapple take it off and eat the pizza. Oh, you you are the first one who said nay because I am definitely mm-hmm. a nay and everyone I've spoken to is a yay so thanks like at least we are in this together. Um and books or movies what are you currently watching or reading? movies for sure because i like watching no brainer movies i am born with bollywood so of course that okay. comes into picture books uh i am currently loving i think i'm re- i'm reading it again it's called the um, almanac of naval ravikant okay. i am really into startup books and podcasts right now so <laughs> that's all you know naval is me, great but... i mean his podcasts yeah. are so powerful it's, it's amazing Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the one right now. Yeah. And what is your favorite food? We got to talk about this. You know, it, this whole segment won't be complete without knowing what you love eating the most. So this is a very difficult question because I'm a foodie and I love all kinds of food. But my comfort food is jeera rice and dal fry. Like 
This is how I test an Indian restaurant if it's good or not. If you've nailed the jeera rice dal fry, I will order other things. <laughs> uh, how is the Indian restaurant scene in uh, Tampa? Is it like good or I know there no? Not okay. so good. Okay. Not so good. So when I actually came to New Jersey and New York, all I did was gorge on Indian food. I was like, "Ye wahan nahi milta." Nahi milta. <laughs> oh, I hear you because I used to initially be in Chicago and before I moved to New York, and uh, I was just so. Every time I made a trip to the new to New York, I wanted to make sure that I go and only eat Indian food. I did not want to try anything. So completely hear you there. Um, and then our last segment, Anjali, like you doing so much. You have a full time job. You are building uh, the Immigrant Academy. You have uh, dreams to take make this into like really big. open it up to so many people that it can be helpful too but how do you unwind or how do you like take a minute to kind of do it all um if you see me missing on social media that means i am too overwhelmed with things and i am procrastinating and i am hiding so uh don't get fooled by you know everything that you see me doing uh the way i unwind is i just shut off technology near me i will go to a coffee shop you know and enjoy like the small things in life i go for a walk get my sunshine go hang out with friends sit at the beach read a book which is not related to business but do anything that will you know just let me be um again i don't have a lot of those moments because as an entrepreneur this is constantly going to be on your mind you know what's next what is that task i have not done but i think i've done a good job at boundary setting and i and i know i can shut off and when i can turn back on but yeah if not uh, burnout is something that i have gone through and i'm sure i will go through it again when you know because it's something you can't control there are days when you feel you have that energy to go and then there are days when you're like i don't even know why i'm doing this so i keep oscillating between those but uh thank god for the support system i have if i did not have my husband and recently my mother in law who's living with us i don't think i would be able to do this if there is no um support in the form of you know uh family or resources or even the word of mouth from the community you know it all makes such a big difference even if i get one good feedback a day priya that makes me want to you know continue yes. doing the work i'm doing and it really matters when people say i'm sure you hear this a lot or no we don't we don't we don't hear compliments good feedback that, or even a thank you that much so if you do feel that way you know please refer share and tell people about the work we're doing because that is our biggest support right we don't have marketing budgets i'm not sitting here with a lot yes. of dollars i am bootstrapping i'm using my own salary in this i don't take a, a dollar out of this so yes we do need that for us to keep going and for us to build something like this at a level they are doing and i'm sure priya you you resonate with everything i'm oh saying oh my god i need to learn how to enjoy the little things in life i feel like i have completely forgotten how to do that and uh, to everything that you're saying from burnout to figuring it all it's real it happens with everyone and any time we get the message that this is helpful that makes our day and uh, i i hear you like it's so so important um anjali yep. get a couple of tips and tricks for people who are looking to start their business or are looking to just start somewhere um if you're looking to start a side hustle make sure it is something that one you're really good at and you love doing don't start a side hustle because oh i need to find something to make more money find what you love and then money will follow right find what you love see how it can help others and then you know you will develop a system to monetize it but uh, that's my number one thing for a side hustle um if you're looking to start a new business um and it could be a small you know product based business service based business uh one read the formalities or legalities of you know establishing you know the bank account and all the formalities of make sure you are at the right path 
to do some research but don't over research or over analyze because it is only going to you know uh set you back time uh i would say when you start you just tell yourself you are going to allow yourself to make mistakes and learn on the way because that is how all of us do there is no blueprint yeah. or you know a set path it looks so different right for everyone so don't over analyze or over research uh go for it and learn on the job this is the best way to learn on the job being an entrepreneur yes. has no <laughs> there is no job description <laughs> you learn everything on the job and you figure it out um and uh get a business mentor if you are very new to business and you have absolutely uh no idea how to do things uh get a business mentor learn from someone who's already figured it out so that you can save yourself a lot of time money and effort um so yeah those are a couple of tips for no uh, those are super <laughs> super helpful uh tips for sure get started but don't go into the rabbit hole of all of the negativity that will come with the research that you're doing don't let people tell you that oh it's not worth it like so many startups fail like do not listen to any of those people like just get started believe in something and go from there anjali would love for you to wrap it up with the details of your program so that people who are listening can kind of benefit um and like really understand where they can get started with the immigrant academy for sure um and i will have a better way to explain this once our website is live and we're very close to it so once that happens you'll know exactly how it's going to help uh, the immigrants here but two things that are coming up one you must have seen me sharing about our new mentoring initiative so we are seeking and calling for um 9 to 5 professionals in the states or canada who worked for three consecutive years to come in as a career mentor with the immigrant academy and i have all the details <laughs> shared on stories and on the posts so please go ahead check it out if you are eligible please sign up if you are not please share with your network we really do need career mentors with us uh and the second announcement would be uh like we were speaking about the ready set role program we will be starting a new cohort in summer around may so if you are a first time job seeker you know you know you're going to get your ead uh send me a message and i'll put you on the wait list uh we are a uh, very positive for this next batch to be at capacity so uh don't hesitate to dm me and uh, we will get you on the list oh, thank you thank you so much anjali thank you for sharing so much i personally feel like i have learned a lot of things that i need to implement in my life so appreciate it and we were really uh, and i'm so glad i'm doing this because today we were kind of going back and forth with uh, me and darshan if darshan should be doing this and he's known you from the homies days but i'm glad i did it and we finally spoke so thank you so much um more power to you best of luck and ho- i hope you can help like a lot of people build their american dream with the immigrant academy um have a wonderful sunday and the rest of the week and thank you everyone for joining us today thank you so much priya this was an absolute blast speaking to you and i really same. enjoyed this uh <laughs> same same yeah, same to meet in person real soon <laughs> whenever you are here you are definitely meeting in person i am excited to have applied for your mentor program so if anyone who's oh, listening definitely apply it's a great way to support anjali's mission and we all just need to be there for each other and build build up the community so thank you anjali it was so great speaking with you bye thank you thank you everyone have a great sunday Hi